Hello, I'm Sheila, the Grateful Goddess, and with me today is Heidi Baker. Heidi and I met through uh, Mind Valley. We went to a Mind Valley reunion in San Diego just a few weeks ago, and we were brought together by a course that they offered by the amazing Lisa Nichols called Speak and Inspire. And I wanted to introduce you to Heidi to show you, again, as a fellow manifester, sort of the process that she went through in taking just a seed of an idea and creating something out of nothing. And so first, and then she'll go into some tips and techniques in terms of how she went about doing that. But first, let's start with, tell us, Heidi, about Time Talks, what it stands for, and your vision for it. Uh, thanks, Sheila. First, mm -hmm. hi, good to see you. You know, it's funny, um, Time Talks. So it sounds like um, it's just the word time, but actually it's an acronym. Um, Lisa Nichols is very inspirational in speaking, and what was really amazing to us, she talked to us about the different types of speakers that there are, and it just hit me. And T stands for transformation. I stands for inspiration. M stands for motivation and E stands for education of the thing that just embodies this whole concept of what we've created with time talks or is the fact that each one of us has a nugget that we, we can teach the world and inspire, motivate, transform and educate others. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to have, you know, a major website or a following to be able to have a message to teach. Wonderful. Thank you. So um, give a little bit more. So you, so you had this idea based on the way Lisa was talking about the different ways in which people are speakers, because some are really informational speakers and others are motivational, inspirational, or transformational. And so those were the different areas. You wanted to bring together all the transformational, motivational, inspirational speakers and give them a platform. Now, the way I see it is it's like it's a, it's the opportunity to create a, your own version of a TED talk. Is that, is that sort of where that seed it's of an idea? It's kind of like a TED talk. Exactly. You're right on the, on the mark. It's funny because um, being in the space of wanting to make a difference, I know that being able to be heard, it, there's a lot of voices now. And quite often we say, we have to have that badge. I'm a PhD, I'm a professor, I have a book on, on, on bestseller list. You should listen to me. And that's really what we find in TED Talks. Now there are some people that have the voices to be able to be heard, but I really wanted to have a space for the, the voices of, of just the everyday person to be heard and for us to know that we're all in this together and that we all want to lift each other up. And yes, it's going to, in my envision, um, I think it's going to be quite similar to a TED Talk in the fact that I'm already getting requests for Australia uh, and for Europe and all over the US. It is um, the most amazing thing because the speeches are not long because there's so many voices that have so many gifts to give. Um, and it's, it's about us supporting each other Mm -hmm. and educating and inspiring each other. Yeah, so after we went through this Speak and Inspire course, then we developed community throughout the program, and then Heidi suggested, hey, since who, who's interested in going to San Diego for the Mind Valley reunion, let's get a group of us together and actually use all that we were just taught and uh, so that we can have a stage, so that we can have this space where we can share our learning, our inspiration, our uh, story, because you know story is so important to helping other people feel a connection, mm -hmm. as well as knowing that they're not alone. Like e each one of our stories helps other people see, oh, I'm not the only one who's gone through that. So many other people have gone through that. And this woman I can really connect with because she did. So from that seed of an idea, let's get together. 29 women came together in San Diego. And we are talking about coming from Europe, France, Netherlands, Canada, U.S., uh, the... Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan. We had a woman came from Pakistan, yes. From yes. Pakistan. I mean, that's literally, let's just go around the globe. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, today, you don't, you don't know this, but today happens to be International Women's Day that we're recording this. So that's just yes. so ideal. Yes. It's, just, it's, it's just so, so 
um, amazing. And so from that, now all of a sudden we've got this momentum going, which is helping create what Time Talks will be in the future. But mm -hmm. it started with just this idea of, hey, let's all get together. And then from that, we are, you know, extended invitations to both uh, Vishen uh, Lakiani, who mm -hmm. is the owner of Mind Valley, and Lisa Nichols. And sure enough, both of them came right. to join right. us at the Time Talks, which was amazing. Right. And it was really interesting because um, I, as you know, um, I help people to manifest. And the thing that's amazing is um, we all kind of got together and talked about it. We did a bit of a manifestation about what it would feel like having them walk in the room. And the funniest is, is if you're doing it right, you get like, like tingling. shakes and you can't sit still. <laughs> and I had people saying, I am tingling, I am tingling. And we just drew this amazing event in. And, and then, I mean, Sheila was there. They honored us twice um, in the weekend because this had never been done before. And it was just this amazing experience where all of these people came together and we even made Vish and Lakiani cry. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. These right. women, they were just phenomenal. And it was amazing to hear everybody's voices and to be there to support each other. So yes, we manifested something phenomenal. So you just perfect segue into some of the, the tips and techniques that you use. And one is actually visualizing yourself uh, with the desired outcome. So whatever it is you want to see happen, you actually put yourself into the feeling space of it actually happening and use all your senses so that you can see it happening. Do you want to yeah. expand upon that? So, you know, it's funny. I, I, I recently had a bit of an aha myself. Um, my grandfather, I'm going to say, well, come right back, back. I promise. My grandfather lived to 97 and a half and he never looked his age. And every time he would meet someone who would say, how, how are you so young? He would always say, um, every day when you wake up, I'm sorry, I have to do it exactly. Every day when you wake up, you have to say every day in every way, I keep getting better and better. <laughs> and then he would finish it with, but you can't just say it. You have to mean it. And that is the nugget in there. The nugget is you can say it all you want, but until it feels good in your body to say it and to feel it, it should make you have chills. It should make you excited. And if it doesn't, there's a block in the way and you just have to get around it. Sometimes people need help to get through it. But I can tell you a bit of a backstory is four months prior to even starting this course, I was literally manifesting that I wanted to speak to women from around the globe. And I would literally walk my neighborhood hours a day and I would have tears to people to change their lives. And look at where we're at today. It's yeah. all about having to feel it in your body. You may not know the how because the how is really none of our darn business. Right. But mostly it's important knowing you have to feel it. If, you, if it feels good to have it, then it, we're like magnets. Yeah. We're, we're, our brains, we have an electric, electrical charge in there. When they do an EEG, it's electricity, okay? Right. When we have emotions, there's a magnetic charge. And when you combine the electro and magnetic together, a thought and, a, um, and an emotion okay. create a feeling, which gives off this charge around us. And right. whatever we give off, we get back. So yeah. that's exactly what we're doing. And the happier we are, and the more we're happy with what we have as if it is right now, yes. the faster it comes back to us, which is a hard thing to do because quite often we sit in, no, 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 it's not safe. No, 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 I don't have money. No, 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 I need to be realistic. You're right. You right. should have your feet firmly planted, but you should also be reaching for something bigger and better because it totally wants to come to you. Right, right. That is so beautiful. And I love... Uh, you know, how your grandfather put it, you need to mean it, which, you know, the emotions are the fuel that create it. So it needs, you have to actually feel it, but it's your, your thought is the initial, is the initial idea. It's a, it's a, it's a thought. And then you move that thought into feeling and emotion within your body, because then that shifts your belief. So it's, it, and that's just, the, the process of manifestation is that you need to believe it to be true for you. And, and, and also to the point that you're making is that um, being realistic, people get really caught up into the realism like, well, 
but that's not true. That's not true. And it's like, yeah, but that's what you want to be true. So it's how can you refocus or reframe where you currently are with gratitude? Because gratitude, again, taking it into the emotion phase right. and, and the emotion phase of gratitude will get you to where you can see all the gifts and beauty of whatever your current situation is. Because generally people default to the uh, anger, frustration, or worry of the current situation, rather than being able to shift into that gratitude for the current situation, because it's the either the motivation or the rocket fuel or whatever to get you to the next place, plus providing you invaluable education and training so that you can speak from the other side. Right, exactly. And you know, it's funny. Uh, I don't know if a lot of the women that you speak to um, are the same as me as I have a slightly mm. medical background. So for me, if it doesn't, if it doesn't look like a duck, it doesn't walk like a duck. Yeah. And, uh, so for me, it has to have like hard science for me to believe it. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza. Yes. When he does his courses about combining the thoughts and emotions into feelings, he actually measures the shock yeah. waves, or I don't know if it's quite shock waves, it's my word for it, but the energy that's given off. And we like to think, well, at first we thought, well, it's just, just around me. Believe it or not, they've been able to measure it seven meters out. Mm -hmm. When you are truly emotional, I think you also probably know about light messages from water, yes. in which um, Dr. Emoto, I believe, was put, yes. I'm sorry, they're cutting my lawn right now, doesn't it just yeah. figure? Um, but uh, he put he put water in a bottle and put a, literally just these typewritten words on there and then froze the water and saw how it changed things. We forget the energy that our words have, the mm -hmm. energy that our feelings have is so much stronger. Yes, words have power, but when they're attached to emotion, I mean, it's, it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. There's actually clinical science. Pretend, pretend that it's real. Trust yeah. me, you yeah. don't have to believe that it's true. Just let it feel good. Yeah. It will still work. Yeah. Yeah, that is. And, and so when you're talking about that science and the vibrational alignment or energy that is emitted, um, heart math is a fabulous way where they measure how far it goes. And, right. and sure enough, beyond the body, I think um, they measure love and appreciation are the highest vibrational energies that are emitting as far as possible. So it also speaks to how we go into either meditation or visualization so that we can um, spread peace and love, which the world so needs. And so needs, yes. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's amazing. That it's funny. It's for med for, I was speaking with uh, uh, Freddie, her name the woman through meditation. And it's true. And you have to be centered. Yeah, exactly. Emily Fletcher, that's what it was. And it was interesting because she does it when she's in a meditative state. And I find for me, it's much more powerful. Um, funny enough, when I first learned this, I created something called Woo Woo Wands. And basically it is um, a wire hanger and you straighten it out and then you put a, an L in it and you have it stick out and you take straws and you put the straws in right at the end and you literally hold it in place. And as you are trying to, and you've got the rods pointing this way, and as you're trying to expand your energy, you'll be shocked every time when you're really doing it. I would usually close my eyes. You have to make sure your hands stay straight. Yeah. They would end up being back at my shoulders every time. And that's how I could check. Am I really running my energy? That's what I call it. I call it running your energy. Yep. Making it big, making it bold. So for me, I personally prefer doing it awake. because It's a lot more fun because I get to feel really good yeah well that's wonderful i the, i'm hoping that this is recording okay because from my end um it keeps freezing am, am i freezing on your end no you're not freezing oh, on my okay. end so we'll see what it comes in if not we will do it again all I've right well thank you okay so um you know we're talking about you know manifesting you know focusing on your desired outcome uh getting feeling how it feels within your body, a uh, visualization, uh, anything else that you want to add in terms of another tip or technique that you use? You know, it's funny. I'm, I'm, a, um, I'm very empathic. So I feel things in my body. I feel when people are happy. I feel when people are sad. My husband always laughs when he's had a bad day and he comes in the door and he's literally across the room and I say, 
what's going on? And he's like, what do you mean? I go, it hurts. My chest hurts. Just tell me. And he's like, how do you do that? So I find that when I do any kind of manifesting, I know where my blocks are because I'll feel it in my chest or in my gut. So as you're saying it, yes, there's a, there's a conscious part of our brain that says you're lying. Heidi, that's not true. You don't have $10 million in the bank. Okay, fine. That's not true. The subconscious will believe it, but the conscious won't. For me, I actually typically feel it more in my body than the conscious because I'm trying to force the conscious to say what I want it to say. And the way for me to know when I've hit a block is I'll have actual like tightness in my chest or discomfort in my body. So if you feel into, if it's not causing you to have chills and to feel like it's just washing over you, like, oh, like, like you just sat in the most beautiful warm pool and it's just, oh, relaxing and oh, it feels good and tingles, mm -hmm. then there's a block. There's a block. And sometimes you have to say, what, what's keeping me from wanting that? Or you can just, what I do when I get to a block is, is I say, well, what will I do if that happens? And actually, literally stop, not, not thinking, because I walk my way in my manifesting. I can't say, today I have a $10 billion company. My brain doesn't allow me to do it. So I walk my way into that. So here I am today, and here I am in three months, and here I am in six months. And I literally walk my path through my manifestation because getting to that point is easier. So mm -hmm. as I get to the nine month goal and I'm like, oh, that doesn't seem possible. I then go, okay, how's it gonna feel when that happens? How's it gonna feel when, when I have 15 different conferences going on at once and I, and I get all these emails from all these amazing people who said it changed their life and I feel amazing and I just have to feel into it. And you literally have to play that story through your head because what doesn't feel possible quite often is because I don't deserve it. It's not going to do enough good in the world. I, I shouldn't have that much money. All these little diatribes. But if you can find your way around why it's okay to have that much money or why it's okay to have that much influence, because what does it do and how does it leave your legacy or whatever are the words that light you up, it makes it easier mm -hmm. to just breathe into it and go, okay, I'm good. I got it. So is are there other ways in which you release the limiting beliefs or is it mostly just taking it in baby steps or is there, is that the main way that you overcome that limiting belief or the blocks within your body? If you can feel the block in your body, how do you release them and, and get beyond them? You know, it's funny for so many years, I mean, we've talked about blocks and getting them out there and I, Everybody is different, so I, I can tell you what works for me. Um, I've tried so many different ways with money blocks. I've tried, and I mean, of course, we all want to get rid of our money blocks. I want to be able to make as much money as possible and feel comfortable with it, but there's always this, this glass ceiling. And by the way, even the people that are making $3 million a year, dear friends who are doing that, they hit their own money blocks. So there's always going to be a block. For me, um, I find when I look at my blocks head on, they get bigger. Mm. When I go, okay, so I don't think that's possible. And I'm like, it is possible. And I feel like I'm, I'm hitting, it's possible, it's possible. So instead I, I literally go, okay, if it already had happened, what fallout would it have? And what would I do good with that? How would I change the world with that positive outcome? Mm -hmm. How would it enable me to be bigger? How will I become something more for others, not just for myself? It doesn't have to become selfish. Um, and that's usually the way that I deal with it. And I, you know, I, have to allow it to be possible in my brain for a long enough period of time. It's funny, I'm trying to think of a, a, a good analogy. When I was a little girl, um, I've, got, I've got bad analogies towards it. It's funny, whenever you have something like, okay, so here's a bad analogy. We, we get accustomed to what we're around a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, when I moved to France at 19, I thought, I am never gonna smoke, that is disgusting. I would never do that because for me, the idea of me smoking seemed so far ahead of me and so away, so away from what I would do, it was out of my, my realm of comfort. But the more I got comfortable with the idea of people smoking around me, eventually people handing me a cigarette, and yes, I wouldn't really smoke it, but I would actually hold it. And then eventually they said, oh, it tastes really good, try it with the coffee. And I would actually smoke a little. And all of a sudden, I became more comfortable with it. And sadly, this is a terrible, terrible example. My kids know about this, so even if they see this, I don't have to be embarrassed. Um, it was never something that I became a smoker, but I find that the more comfortable we become with a thought, the easier it is to slip into. The easier, so it may take a while. It may take some time to go, wow, having the job that I've wanted my whole life mm -hmm. seems impossible. 
you have to actually create it and as a possibility to start with. And once you've gotten comfortable with the idea of putting the jacket on, I'm like, how would that look if I had that job? How would I look if I lived in that house? Mm -hmm. how, how would it feel? And mm -hmm. so when it happens, funny enough, um, you actually, when you come to these bigger dreams, I now have a much better example than that terrible one I just gave you. Growing up, I always wanted to be in the Today Show. When I was eight years old, I decided I was going to be in the Today Show. I didn't know how, I didn't know for what, I didn't know why, but I knew I was going to be in the Today Show. Um, I actually was in the Today Show for the first time in my 30s, and I've been on it twice. And I have to tell you, the thing that's really intriguing is I thought about it enough times that as a child, it was like, oh my God. It was like I was walking yeah. into this castle that was bigger than me, and I was a little tiny person walking in as an eight-year-old. But every time I thought about it, I got bigger, and my dream got a little bit more realistic and a little bit closer to me. And as I came upon it, it became the same size as me. And as the days happened, it's funny because I thought the day that I was on the Today Show, I was going to be like so excited I couldn't function. And, and I literally got off the Today Show and I called my husband. He goes, how did it go? Because we were partners in our business. How did it go? I said, it went fantastic. Because he was you know, three hours back in California. And I said, what's going on today? And, and he said, wait, 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 wait. Take a second. You were just on the Today Show. I was like, I know, but I got other things to do. He's like, no. <laughs> so it seemed normal. It seemed like I had prepared myself perfectly. And of course I was in the Today Show. Of course, when he stopped me, which he should have, and I'm glad he did. I got to enjoy you need to celebrate it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when we allow them to be possible and we step into them one step at a time, we can walk over those, those barriers because mm -hmm. we think they're so big. But mm -hmm. once we step over them enough times mentally, it allows us to go into it. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that help? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, when you first started, it was like when you have the thought and you're trying to force the thought, it's like what we resist persists and it's like it's a it's a battle of the brain like you know i just don't believe this so you're saying step back from that don't try to force the thought but go into the feeling space of how would life look differently should that happen how would it feel how you know all of those sorts of things just more in a playful space which yes. releases the resistance to all of it exactly yeah. it releases the resistance and and it pulls away the fear of well, what if that were to happen? And oh my God, and how would everybody think? And I don't know if I can yeah. do that. And I, it, you just need to enjoy it. And, yeah. and by the way, if it doesn't feel good, then maybe you're going down the wrong path. Yeah, exactly. That's the other thing to realize. Sometimes what we think we want, we don't really want. Right, right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Heidi. This has been so much fun. I really appreciate your time you're today. Welcome. And um, and I'll post more information down below if you want to hear more about Heidi and Time Talks and mm -hmm. uh, Mind Valley or Speak and Inspire. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.